I pledge allegiance to the flag of the corporate states of America and, and to, to the, the plutocracy for which it stands, one nation under debt, easily divisible, with congressmen and justice for sale. Tonight. The Trans Pacific Partnership that's been developed for 10 years in secret by mega corporations worldwide will merge the North American Union that's been integrated by stealth, rammed through by stealth, and the European Union, also put in by fraud and secretly, then to be unveiled later. These totalitarian systems are basically being finished up right now. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States of America is almost finished. Today, we officially became America Incorporated, a global corporate empire that no longer represents the will of the American people. The stranglehold over both political parties by the multinational corporations, Big Pharma and Wall Street, has shockingly and shamefully become evident as the Trojan horse that is the fast track to the TPP has been approved by the Senate and will no doubt be signed by our puppet president, the Manchurian candidate, Barack Obama. And it makes no difference that the majority of American people overwhelmingly oppose the Trans-Pacific Partnership because it's not about you. This is about corporate greed and the corporate takeover of our country. Welcome to the plantation. Well, it took them 10 years to ram it through. In fact, 10 years ago, the mainstream media said it didn't exist. Now they admit it merges the North American Union and the European Union with the Asian Union. It's the TPP. It's already been ratified by secret corporate groups. U.S. polls showed that upwards of 90% of Americans were against it. Congress wasn't even allowed to read it, but one page at a time in a secret room. And after it was voted down repeatedly in the House, it finally passed earlier this week. And today, just minutes ago, it passed the Senate. And the media spun it like it was a victory for Obama and his legacy. His legacy, like it's a football game, like the New England Patriots won something. This is, in the 240-year history of this country, the biggest blow to our sovereignty ever. We've got three sections of it that have been leaked by WikiLeaks, another 25 are secret. Those three sections alone make the president a dictator. Congress has no legislative control over borders, over trade, over uh, finances, over currency. It is truly mind-blowing. And Congress is so blackmailed, so controlled, it was rammed through. To the Democrats' credit, a lot of them in the House and Senate voted against it, and, along with the Tea Party. But the Republican establishment, Democratic establishment, combined forces yet again against the American people. Look, in the past, armies conquered nations. Now it's these corporate boards. It's all through fraud. And we can expect to be looted. We can expect to have our laws made in secret, just like the people of the European Union. This is a very sad day for America. It's so surreal. It's so breathtaking. I have trouble myself believing it happened. I was so excited last week when there was incredible pressure uh, on the House, and they voted it down. But Obama traveled to the Hill, twisted arms, and got a bunch of Democrats to go over to him. Uh, they used the whole Confederate battle flag diversion uh, as a way to get people obsessed on that. And we took it hook, line, and sinker. Now is the fight to try to stop them from fully implementing it. But the whole thing's secret in perpetuity, so how do you fight something that's invisible? It's stealth. And that's what the North American Union documents talked about that got uh, released by Judicial Watch when they sued back in 2007, was that it's North American integration by stealth, and that they would then integrate North America with the other unions by stealth as well. That's in the document I cover in my film, Endgame Blueprint for Global Enslavement. Understand, the bottom's now fallen out. The government's gone full tyranny, and nothing is stopping them now because of the blackmail, the insider trading, whatever it is, 
Katie, bar the door, all over the world, governments are pledging their support to the big six mega banks, and we are headed towards world government. The Pope has called for a global government. Everybody's calling for one in the establishment. It is a unified front, left, right, and center, to bring in an unelected, secretive, planetary, corporate government. We have been conquered by Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan and the Bank of England. This country that was somewhat free since our revolution in 1776 wasn't perfect, but became the apple of the world's eye because we had more freedom than others, has now sunk into the mud. And this is a devastating blow. While we were busy complaining about Confederate flags and sex changes for Jenner, while we were busy entranced by the television, our country was stolen. As Thomas Jefferson warned, if private central banks are ever allowed to issue the currency, our grandchildren will wake up homeless on the continent our forebears conquered. I'm Alex Jones from the front lines of the info war. The tyranny is just starting, but humanity fighting back has just begun. So this is a global coup d'etat with a bunch of Republicans and Democrats working together to screw over the nation. Because let's face it, they've been bought and paid for and they've totally sold out at this point. And if you're not familiar with what's going on here, you know, I don't know if you realize it, but the TPP is the largest trade deal in world history. It involves countries stretching from Chile all the way up to Japan, representing more than 790 million people and 40% of the world economy. But it was negotiated in secret meetings behind closed doors. You and I weren't allowed to see it. Hell, they even kept Congress in the dark. They weren't allowed to see it either. But I tell you who was allowed to take part in the secret meetings, over 600 corporate executives, corporate advisors were in there negotiating this deal. And here's a little example of what they came up with. Big corporations have become even stronger with an international tribunal of private attorneys outside of any nation's legal system. And that means no more laws to protect consumers from unsafe products. No more laws to protect us from unhealthy foods. More Americans will lose their jobs. Unemployment will rise even higher as millions of jobs will be shipped overseas. In fact, according to Professor Alan Blinder of Princeton University, he expects as many as 40 million U.S. jobs that could be sent overseas. Wow. So this is very, very serious, and you can expect a dramatic increase in poverty. I mean, health care is going to go through the roof. And just like Obamacare and mandatory vaccines, this is a way for the corporate giants to force us to buy their products. I mean, this is a total corporate takeover of America. And joining us now is Anthony Gucciardi from Natural Society and David Knight from InfoWars Nightly News. And I wanted you guys in here to try to help make sense of all this because there's a lot of confusion going on right now. Most people never even heard of the TPP. And Knight, let's start with you. How does this affect the average American citizen? Well, yeah, as we said earlier today, the, the, the deliberate confusion, calling it the everything is a T and a P, right? You got the TPP, the TTIP, the TPA, the TAA. What they need to understand is what's passed is the fast track procedure to ram this through, but it hasn't been rammed through. A lot of people are going to look at this and they're going to say, ah, you know, we lost. We tried to stop that process and we lost that process, but these trade agreements have not gone through. So the fight isn't over. That's right. It's going to affect a lot of people. And I think you see a lot of resistance from the Democrat side, more so than you do from the Republican side, because I think the base of the Democrats are very upset about this. They understand this is going to affect uh, food, it's going to affect jobs, the environment, uh, a lot of things that they hold dear. First Amendment, okay? Things that they hold dear. Republicans are looking at this and thinking, oh, this is just free trade. It's not free trade. This is crony capitalism, just like what we saw happen with the banker bailouts. This is crony capitalism, but it's also going to affect, and conservatives need to understand this, it's going to affect the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. It is also going to affect immigration. Open borders is a part of this. Uh, senator Sessions looked at this. He's one of, if not the most conservatively rated senators. He looked at this and he says, look, this is really going to affect our open borders. That's what happened with NAFTA. Remember, that was just a trade agreement. Mm -hmm. It opened the borders. This does the same thing, and it has a lot of issues that conservatives should be in, interested in. But the key thing is that this is a secret deal 
that's been worked out with corporations. It's being shoved down everybody's throats, and it's attacking our sovereignty. That's where they typically won't go is talking about world government. They keep those hands tied behind their back. They don't want to talk about that. We need to talk about that as well. But there's issues for both the left and the right in this. Well, and Anthony, you said something interesting. You said uh, that it was the Monsanto Protection Act on steroids. How does this trade agreement affect or benefit evil corporations like Monsanto? You know, I think there's such a misconstrued amount of information surrounding the TPP and the TPA. And just to clarify and break it down, like David was saying, the TPA is what passed, right? So that's the Trade Promotion Authority. And that allows for the TPP to be fast-tracked. And how that works is Obama comes in and says, okay, this is what I want for the TPP, and the Congress can either vote it up or down. No more amendments. Right, no more amendments whatsoever. And this is from an international body of, of, of groups and individuals who are putting this and shoving it down our throats. Mm -hmm. So there's still an opportunity to defeat the TPP because it's not officially passed. We've All just right. allowed for the fast-tracking. But specifically, you know, we break this down, and everyone always is saying, like David was saying, the Democrats are against this. And then we're saying, well, the Republicans are against this. The lie is that so many people are for this. There's no one for this. It, it, anyone that's for this is either being paid for by the corporations who are benefiting from mm -hmm. it or being bought the propaganda by these corporations that are benefiting. Well, from and we're all being left in the dark because this was negotiated behind closed doors. Congress really hasn't been able to take a look at it. I thought it was interesting that even though none of us were allowed to see it, over 600 what they called corporation advisors were allowed to go in and negotiate this deal. So oh, the this lobbyists is a it. big yeah, corporation. Well, so they it make sure it's good for them. 600 economic hitmen, if you will. Yeah. Right. Well, they want to make sure that the corporations are actually benefiting from this because they're the one pushing, the ones pushing it. They're the ones that are going to railroad this through. For example, Monsanto. Over 90% of the United States public is in favor of GMO labeling. There's no question. Absolutely. It should have happened years and years ago. It should have happened decades ago, right? Mm -hmm. But now we're at, we're at a turning point where states like Vermont are issuing mandatory GMO labeling. Monsanto is going to lose billions of dollars. They're already losing profits every single month. They lost $128 million in the last fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Okay, They are losing. The grocery lobbyists are also losing. They know they are failing. This is their only hope to fight back and ban GMO labeling. This would so they give, can make it illegal, yes, basically, right? Yes, yeah. based on mm. the legalese of the entire build, some of it that has been leaked, and of course the mysterious parts of it, the legal experts are saying it gives the ability of Monsanto and the United States government to go in and say, well, we've already determined GMOs are safe, so labeling them would be the wrong thing to do. Well, what, how do they make it illegal? They, it hurts their profit? Is that why? I mean, is that what they well, point out? Well, because they can like, argue that it's safe. I mean, remember, as we spoke about earlier, the U.S. Trade Department, the U.S. State Department has been caught paying Monsanto's marketing bills overseas. Yeah. Okay, that's how in bed they are. They can go ahead and say that GMOs are so safe that you don't need to know if they're in your food, because what would it matter if the same as natural food? And then well, why would we label anything then? Why would we label aspartame, right, if it's so safe? Why would we label artificial ingredients if they're so safe? Where does it end? What if we don't need to label any of those things because it's just the same as regular food? The TPP is extremely dangerous, and we soon may actually have no idea what we're eating if it goes through and they push these legisl uh, this legislation on us. Wow. Your food agreements aren't just going to be secret. This trade agreement is secret, and that ought to raise everybody's concerns. And I think that's been one of the most effective things that has come out in opposition of this. If they won't tell you what it's in, what's in it, it's because they know you're going to oppose it when you see what's in it. And that ought to get everybody upset, is the secrecy of this thing. All right, thank you guys, I appreciate it. So this is basically what has happened with previous so-called free trade deals, but on a much, much larger scale. And basically, this could be potentially the end of America as we know it, should this traitorous act be pushed through. I mean, it's going to affect each and every one of us. And I don't even think they should call it a trade deal because it is a deal that is made by traders. Jakari Jackson for Infowars.com. A topic I've been wanting to cover for a while now is that of human trafficking. And last week, myself and Kit Daniels had a chance to go out to the Human 2020 event. And this was a showcasing of artists presenting their works in hopes of bringing more attention to the very serious issue. I had a chance to speak to some of the people behind the event. We're just impressed with the turnout this evening. Yeah, um, Human 2020 is an initiative. It is something that is coming from civil society. It is going um, all over the world. People are just picking it up and they're just saying, hey, what can we do to be part of the solution? So here in Austin, 
Um, we have a bunch of professional artists. They came together. They said they wanted to create artwork to help raise the awareness around uh, the issue in our city and around the world. Hi, I'm Nisha Khanna, and I'm part of the Human 2020 uh, Anti-Human Trafficking Initiative. And over here we have salvage jewelry. It's jewelry created by women salvaged from difficult situations in Sri Lanka, such as uh, human trafficking, abuse, poverty, and it creates jobs for these women. Um, it's made from 100% recycled materials, and so the play it, and the company is called Salvage. So that play upon the word of salvage materials um, for women that are salvaged, and then all the proceeds go back into feeding that business and creating jobs for women and helping them get out of that situation and uh, and be financially independent. And then we have some of the bangles. Bracelets, I strung two sets together. I have that one. And then I have these earrings. <laughs> the women get paid, and the people that produce the materials, they get paid for what they do and what they produce. Then also there's an additional amount on top of that. That helps to fund other projects that salvage supports uh, in Sri Lanka. So for example, the only HIV drop-in center in the country is funded by salvage. And Govinda left us with a few ways you can get involved outside of the event. Well, I think part of it is beginning to raise your own awareness, beginning to understand the issue. I mean, you can connect with Human 2020, but I would suggest more do something within your own community, do something within your own location, your own city, your own town. Um, connect with people there. Find out what's going on in your community. You can find more reports on InfoWars.com. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Vote for Jeb, or you're just fucking stupid. Fool me, we can't get fooled again. This is an engineered crisis to create artificial scarcity on the world's most valuable and simple resource, water. People like Al Gore are constantly blaming extreme weather and natural disasters on climate change when the real culprit is weather. But in all reality, climate change is quite real. Hi, I'm Rex Jones reporting for InfoWars.com. With all the recent flooding in Central Texas, it's leading many people to believe that climate change is the real cause. Take a look at Barton Creek. This used to be a dry creek bed. Now look at it. It's flowing like a real river. In fact, if you take a little peek at a topography map of Texas, half of the state is green and the other half is brown. Here in Austin, Texas, where the Texas Hill Country begins and the flatland ends, is the known boundary between wet and dry areas of Texas. In fact, we had so much rain here over Memorial Day weekend, my good friend Stevie Ray Vaughan was almost underwater. The general weather in the state of Texas can vary from snowstorms, to a desert heat, but generally our climate stays the same. People like Al Gore are constantly blaming extreme weather and natural disasters on climate change when the real culprit is weather. But in all reality, climate change is quite real. Here's an excerpt by well-known climatologist Tim Ball as he details the effects of real climate change on the world today. My life has spanned four climate changes. I was in, in the pre-war uh, warming up to 1940 and then I was in the cooling that occurred from 1940 to about 1980. And then I was in the warming from 80 to 98. And now we're into another cooling trend. And hopefully I'll live to at least one more climate change. When I started out, it was a, not a contentious issue at all. Now it's become one of the most contentious in the world because it's been exploited for political purposes. Just as we talked about with Einstein, if you were to show that there was something going faster than the speed of light, would put that whole theory in jeopardy. With the, with the anthropogenic global warming theory, um, the idea that a CO2 increase will cause a temperature increase is now clearly shown to be wrong. Um, in fact, I challenge anybody to show me a record of any duration of any time period in the history of the Earth in which CO2 
is precedes a temperature increase. In fact, in every case, it's the opposite. Temperature increases before CO2. And um, it, will, it will take, ironically, a cooling of the earth, as is now occurring, to make people start to question. And um, so eventually, the uh, people will start to understand how bad the science is, how wrong the original theory was, and the whole thing will collapse. Most of the crazy weather we've been having is largely blamed by meteorologists on the pattern of weather known as El Nino, which is a warm patch in the Pacific Ocean, which leads to more rain in general in the United States of America. As you can see, we're getting the full force of El Nino this year. And with meteorologists saying that there's a 95% chance that it will continue on to this fall, we haven't seen the last of this rainy weather. Barton Creek feeds into Lady Bird Lake, also known as the Colorado River, behind me. And even though we have many dams in place, massive rainfall can still cause heavy flooding. People like Al Gore and the Pope are claiming yet again that climate change is caused by human activity. How about we have a real scientist talk about the issues? Here's weather forecaster, Piers Corbin, on what is the real biggest effector of climate change. The origin of our solar weather technique of long-range forecasting came originally from study of sunspots and a desire to predict those. And then I realized it was actually much more interesting to use the sun to predict the weather. What they found was an incredibly close correlation between what the sun was doing and changes in temperature on Earth. To the Harvard astrophysicists and many other scientists, the conclusion is inescapable. The sun is driving climate change. CO2 is irrelevant. Another place climate change preachers are flocking to to spread their fear porn would be California with its three-year drought. This doesn't seem that big compared to 200 and 400 and even thousand year droughts that have happened in California's past. The real problem with California is that it hasn't provided adequate enough reservoirs to supply water to the tens of millions of people that live there today. This is an engineered crisis to create artificial scarcity on the world's most valuable and simple resource water. But the place where climate change preachers can do real damage is in trade agreements such as the TPP. The TPP is going to put no environmental restrictions whatsoever on third world developing countries allowing them to develop freely. This doesn't sound like such a bad thing, but well developed countries will be shackled to the ideals of environmentalism and be forced to have very strict, almost insane environmental regulations. So when people start preaching to you about Bill Nye, Al Gore and the Pope telling us that climate change is all our fault. Just tell them that they're complaining about the weather. I'm Rex Jones, reporting for InfoWars.com. Did you know that only six corporations control 90% of what millions of Americans see, hear, and read every single day? It's the illusion of choice. Think about it. The mainstream media is owned by only a handful of mega corporations with vested interests. But on the other hand, the internet is an interconnected network of billions of sources. So you can research information for yourself from multiple sources, or you can blindly accept what you hear or read in the mainstream media, never questioning what you are being told. This gives you a false sense of reality. I mean, do you actually know what you think you know? Or have you been programmed to accept someone else's version of events? Think about it. This is Darren McBreen, and I want you to break the matrix at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. And listen to The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on your mind. Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now this week, the Pope decided to go full retard when he released a statement saying that gun manufacturers are not Christians. Well, I find that extremely funny to hear that coming from the Pope because here at InfoWars.com, we do have a Christian-owned gun manufacturer as a sponsor, Head Down Rifles. Now their CEO and co-founder, David Hunsucker, released a statement where he was just completely in shock by the fact that the Pope would release such a statement going after manufacturers of guns. This is a Christian-owned company. These guys provide a service for families who do not have the money to go to these expensive grocery stores and buy food. Head Down Rifles allows families to go out, hunt, put food on the table for their families. Now also, 
they provide a service in security. Now, why do we need security? Because we live in a world where bad things do happen. There are people out there who intend to do harm to you, your family, and your belongings. So it's a, it takes it, you have to take it upon yourself to go out and protect yourself and your family. Now, there is a verse in the Bible, Luke 22, verse 36. Jesus says to them, but now if you have a purse, take it, and also a bag. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. Now, what does that mean? If you're going to have, if you're going to be walking around out there, you need to be able to protect yourself. This is in the Bible. But the Pope doesn't want you to have that. He's jumping on board with Obama, with Feinstein, with Holder. What happens in areas where they go and grab your guns? Look what happened in France with the Charlie Hebdo attacks when ISIS was able to just move freely about and shoot things up, kill people. Look what happens when ISIS comes to Texas here in the U.S. They get shot down. Why? Because we are able to protect ourselves. We live in a world where bad people do bad things. And you have to sometimes take it upon yourself to protect yourself. There's not always going to be this divine power that's going to jump down and stop a bullet coming at you. You need to be able to pick up a gun and be able to protect yourself and those around you. And that's what it's all about. It's funny how the people who want to take your guns are the ones who are most surrounded by them. The president doesn't want us to be able to have our guns, and yet he is completely protected by tons of people with firepower. Feinstein, completely protected by people with guns. Air Holder, completely protected by people with guns. When you look back in history at all these nations where the weapons were taken away from the populace, what has happened? Complete and total tyranny. So there's a lot of things that we have to do in this world, in this country, to make some positive changes. But one thing that shouldn't change is the right to bear arms. I'm Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com. You know, with all this talk lately about gun control, it occurred to me that I have yet to see a single politician who can explain to me how they plan to take guns away from the criminal thugs who are out there on the streets right now. Oh, sure, you'll hear plenty of talk about how they plan to take guns away from us, us law-abiding citizens. But if you take guns away from all of us legal gun owners, then the only people that will have guns will be the bad guys. In fact, I'm curious. I want to see a show of hands right now. All those for gun control, raise your hand. All right, there's one, two, three, four. Anyone else? Ah, see there, that figures. All the usual suspects. Any questions? Thank <laughs> you.